Principle-based leadership, I've trademarked because that really captures my thinking and approach to leadership. And if I explain it further, I would say it is, it's to simplify and ground the multifaceted concept of leadership in a range of principles that guides leaders' thinking, behaviors, and approaches to the task of leading. It stems from the belief that leaders grow their effectiveness and influence by internalizing key principles. We call it, call it inside-out leadership. So, as you can see, there, it's, it's really about to, to believe that to be a good leader ultimately is not to talk the talk, it's really to, to live it. And it's really to, to have it as part of your belief system, your own convictions, um, and always goes hand in hand with a willingness and openness to keep on learning. Uh, if, if that disappears, I'm, I'm afraid, you know, you can have the title and have the knowledge and have the expertise, but you're hardly effective as a leader. So, secondly, we say it's about knowing yourself as being self-aware and authentic. It engages the leader's belief and value system as opposed, and this is important, to merely relying on theory, models, and tactical approaches. So I'm not much of a believer of purely conceptual models or the latest and interest most interesting discoveries and research that has been done on leadership, um, you know, uh, 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 that type of thing, if it is not built on personal development. In Leading Self, we start with the, with the uh, intrinsic foundation, or things that really um, comes into play when we talk resilience. And everybody nowadays talk about resilience, not so. Where does it start? It starts with your authenticity. What is your passion? What is your view of your self-worth? And what is your character? Personal mastery, of course, is all to do with how I conduct myself out there and what I need to be a good leader in terms of how I conduct myself. So it's your adaptability, very important today. It's your life balance. It's your self-confidence, self-awareness, self-motivation, self-discipline, self-initiative, and your perseverance things, how you master your own life. Now you can become a very successful person just following this part. And that's really what we see typically as the profile of people that being successful. Because they become experts and very effective in their roles applying those disciplines in their lives. The moment you have a bigger dream a bigger vision than just for yourself in this life, it's important to go to the next step because interpersonal skills is going to be <coughs> of critical importance. It's not just about you, it's about how you interact with others. So it's how you connect with people, how you build relationships, how you become a servant with, servant with what you do. Um, building support, communication, build, building team and building trust. Of course, you can see that's all the type of uh, principles and skills needed for a leader with a team working through and with others. So here again, we take them through a self-reflection process. How do you relate to those things? Perhaps you, you're aware that it's important, but in reflection, you discover that I don't actually like doing that type of thing. Or I'm not, I don't feel confident enough in doing that, those type of things. So it's a development journey. And then it's if the dream is bigger than that. So you're in a position, you, are, uh, you have a team to work with, people reporting to you. Yes, that's all good and well. But from a leadership point of view, you actually only become uh, go to a next level by developing leaders under you. So that is not a matter of typically a management control type of thing, but it is how you empower people, how you are able to coach them for their own development so that um, the spin-off is, is actually just much more than you ever would have thought by just looking at the expected outcomes or wanted outcomes. You go way beyond it by developing others. It's through your decision making, it's through your leadership style, it's through how you recognize them, how you empower them, how you inspire them, and how you lead with integrity and honesty, because that is an interface between yourself and those people that give them the trust 
to, um, to follow, but also to grow themselves. So that's the second. Then we go to the third, and now we are in the space of leading change, because now you're looking at organizations. So it was first leading yourself, then leading people reporting to you, then thinking about the next layer, in other words, how do I develop them to become leaders, do some succession planning, in fact, and grow others, but then it becomes more of a bigger and structural role where we look at an organization. How do I take an organization as a leading organization? And there you will need your visionary thinking, strategic thinking, but a lot of awareness things as well. So it's not only a case of um, being um, future-minded, but also awareness, contextual kind of awareness. In other words, what is the context? What, are, what is changing in our lives? Trend and systems awareness, organizational awareness, cultural awareness, technology awareness, creativity and innovation, all of those come into play. So those are the three edit or the five. In other words, intrinsic foundation, your resilience, your personal mastery, interpersonal effectiveness, how you grow others and how you lead change. The five, module, five modules of the principle-based leadership journey.